I think a lot of people are really scared about trying their hand at mastering their own music, or maybe they have tried mastering their own music and they've cringed at the results. There's a pretty widespread lack of understanding about what the mastering process actually involves and what it's capable of. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that is getting in the way of progress for a lot of music producers. I know with myself, before I started doing mastering, my ignorance of the mastering process held me back as a mixer. But as soon as I started even attempting my own test masters just for my own use, it was the biggest single level up that I've ever had in my mixing skills and my skills as a producer. So I want to help you guys to get around this block that some of you might have by sharing information on the mastering process. The first thing that I'm doing is I'm actually making publicly available for free many of my real mastering sessions. So these are actual real releases for actual clients and I'm taking you inside the mastering sessions, showing you what I'm doing step by step all the way through. If you wanna check those out, I've dropped a link to that playlist of my mastering sessions below this video. Now, the second thing I wanna introduce you to, and that's the topic of this video, is something I call the mastering stress test. And this was just a very simple two minute technique that I started doing in my own music that allowed me to see the exact precise areas where my mix was breaking apart and falling flat on its face. Once I started to understand that, I could go into the mix and fix it. And that was what was responsible for this huge level up. Let's hop in and check out that technique. Sweet, so here's the session we're gonna be working with. This is a song I'm co-producing with one of my Accelerate program coaching students. And we're midway through production. We're kind of really just at the beginning of the mix. So this is a perfect time to be applying this technique. Let's have a quick listen to the session. Awesome. So the first thing you do is you go down to your master and you add a EQ and you add a limiter. Now I'm using Pro Q3 and Pro L2 from FabFilter, but you could use anything here. You don't even need to use an EQ. You could use a spectrum analyzer. The key is you need to be able to see what frequencies are doing across your spectrum and you need to be able to push your mix into a limiter. So that's the, the key part about the stress test is where your mix is gonna start to show its flaws in mastering is once it starts to hit a large amount of gain reduction. That's what's gonna shine the spotlight on the problems in your mix. You know it's gonna be hitting a limiter eventually, so why not hit it into a limiter at the very beginning of your mixing process and that helps to inform your, your next decisions. And then the spectrum analyzer, and the reason I like this one is because you can click and hold to freeze areas of the spectrum. Now. I've intentionally made a mistake in this mix and I want to fire it through these two effects and see if we can spot it, okay? So let's stress test the mix. Okay, can you see what's wrong? Let's take a look at the spectrum. Look at what's happening down here in the subs. We can see a huge accumulation of low frequency at high amplitude, and that's gonna be a problem that's gonna make any mix super, super muddy. Okay, that's just one of the problems in this mix. So where's that coming from? Well, this is the mistake that I said that I intentionally made. So this song has a bass that is comprised of two layers, a sub layer and a top layer. And whenever you're doing that, you should be high-passing the top layer. So I intentionally disabled a really aggressive high-pass filter at 95 hertz, and that was causing the bass to really creep in to mask up with the sub and cause a, an amplitude spike. Um, I'm going to shift this to linear phase because when you're doing an aggressive cut, uh, that's the way you should roll. And here's the sub it's summing with. And now here it is all together. Okay, let's take a look at that again on the master.
good. Yeah, M- much better there. That has already nudged the mix in a in the right direction. Okay, and then we were looking at the limiter. How hard do you push the limiter? Very easy. You use a reference track that's something that is very similar to the song that you're producing, same genre or similar genre. Um, maybe it's something from a record label that you're pitching your track to. How loud do you go or how loud do you stress test? So you just take a look at and clock the reference track. Yeah, so it's sitting at about uh, negative six and a half short-term luffs. And let's go back and see where our limiter is sitting. I've set the limiter to short-term versus integrated so we can see these numbers clocking really quickly. Okay, and now we're in the same range. And you can see here is the larger problem, which is look at how much gain reduction the limiter is having to do to be able to get the song this loud. This is in the area of, this is garbage loudness, what I call garbage loudness. And you should never, ever make your mastering limiter work this hard. If you are, you've messed the mix up. So I always like to take a look at and see, okay, what's triggering the limiter to work that hard? And then how do we address that in the mix? So in this case, very clearly, it's the drums. The drums are very on top in this mix. Uh, They're, yeah, they're large and in charge. So I might take this information and say, okay, well, let's probably nip and tuck the drums, uh, add some peak level reduction throughout the mix using other tools like clippers and saturators so that it's not summing up and causing the mastering limiter to to freak out and cause negative artifacts. Again, it's garbage loudness when you're using a limiter to push this hard. So there you have it. That's the mastering stress test. Very simple. You just use two plugins, a spectrum analyzer or an EQ with a spectrum and a limiter to push the mix. Again, I'm not advocating pushing your mix like this and just calling it a day and that's your test master. You're, we're using this as a diagnostic tool to be able to figure out what needs to change in the mix, what areas of the mix are breaking apart once you get to this level of loudness in your master. So again, it's a, it's shining the spotlight on things that you can improve. And then because you're in the mixing phase still, you can go back and fix them where they need to be fixed in the mixing phase. This was my attempt to make a shorter video. I've been really trying to get my video lengths down to around five minutes. So uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about this one. I tried to be as succinct as possible while still delivering a lot of value. If you did like this video, please smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And where do you go from here? You know, if you're inspired by this content and you really want to level up your skills, I encourage you to check out my full playlist on mixing and mastering. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I've got full end-to-end start-to-finish mastering sessions where I show you exactly what I'm doing in mastering and the same thing with mixes, as well as a lot of kind of isolated uh, best practices in terms of mixes. There's my personal template that you can download. I'll include a link for that as well. This whole project was done in my personal mix template that includes structured busing and a whole bunch of routings that just make the mixing process a lot easier, especially when your goal is to get clean, transparent loudness. Right on. Let's call it a day on that one. Thank you so much for tuning in and happy music making. I'll catch you in the next one.